What is up, guys? It's your boy, Jake from Team Insanity, bringing you the Planet Eclipse Ether 2 reveal. Num numero 2. Now, a lot of you guys know I don't like the original Planet Eclipse Ether. It really wasn't that big of a deal. It wasn't really that amazing of a gun. Okay, so with that being said, um, a lot of people know how I feel about a lot of the lower end Planet Eclipse guns. Don't really like them. I've been coming into a lot of um, Planet Eclipse's new stuff with an open mind. Bought the G-Tech, bought the E-Tech 5. E-Tech 5, really, really good step in the new direction. Really like what they're doing. Um, G-Tech, still kind of eh, mixed emotions about it. But um, a lot of people see me using the, the Etha 2 here. So I'm really going to get down into it and really break this gun down now. <clears throat> a lot of you guys have been wanting to see like the old school style reviews with the studio, the table, efficiency test, maintenance video. So that's what's going to happen and I'm not really going to go in depth. I'm not going to read off a bunch of features. So if you guys are wondering what the features are and that kind of stuff, hit the new tab button right off to the side of your browser. Type in planeclips.com, find the Etha tab and it'll tell you what each feature is. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you a basically how the features work okay so I'm going to tell you what I think about them um, how I like the gun what I dislike about the gun that kind of stuff that's what I'm going to go into I'm not just going to rattle off the features anyone can open open up a Google link and find Plain Eclipse's website and read off the features anyone can open up a box and you know figure out if they like you know sit here and say thanks mom this is the best gun ever so I'm just going to give you the most honest review that I possibly can of this gun now a lot of people know I've been shooting this gun a lot, okay? I'm going to get into that here. I'm going to tell you why, but stay tuned. There's going to be an efficiency test, maintenance video, all that good stuff in this. So, basically, this is the Plain Eclipse Etha 2, right? Her. So, we got this basically when it came out. It's, this is pretty much once it came out, I, I got it. And a lot of you guys, like I said, know that I'm not the biggest Plenty Eclipse fan. I have a lot of Plenty Eclipse guns other than the LV-1 series. It's I just don't like poppets. Um, but I'm not the biggest fan of their low-rend guns because compared to some of the other gun companies out there, they're really not, there's, they're really not that incredible. Um, but, and I have really haven't made this review in a long time. You guys know I've put a lot of paint through this, but I, especially shot this and use this a lot more than what I normally do with other guns just because I've been so like Err, like I don't like I don't know what I want to say about the gun that's the big issue about it is that I just I don't know like I was always like on the fence about what I wanted to say how I felt how I didn't feel you know I was just sort of eh, half and half and half on it just sort of really not knowing what to say but I kind of really dialed this in um, the ASA awesome ASA it's basically a pops ASA there's not much I can really say about it um, let me get in before I get into that feed neck clamping feed neck two-piece barrel um, let me just start here the barrel is not that amazing I mean for the price eh, it's it's a stock barrel I hardly ever use a stock barrel I did on it this weekend didn't really like cause too many issues I mean I would rather have shot my boomstick or you know with my Stella any other of my aftermarket barrels over top of it but again it's a stock barrel it's not like you really have to go buy a new one I'm just not the biggest fan of the shaft for barrel kits um, they're really not that amazing um, but let's talk about how the gun feels in your hand okay the gun for me it's actually a little stretched out and it and it is spaced really really well okay so with that being said it's really comfortable unlike the last plane eclipse etha it was kind of weird the last the last etha and to be honest when i got this out of the box i was like oh my god this gun is just uh it's thick it's blah blah and it is this gun is really really beefy okay so is the front grip this gun is fat and it's ugly. And Plain Eclipse, if I had awards to give you, if I had something I could send in the mail to you, I would totally 100% give you the ugliest paintball gun in the industry award. Um, pretty much hands down, the only other argument anyone can possibly make is the Defy D3S. Other than that hideous fucking gun, this is pretty much the ugliest gun I have ever seen in the entire industry 
100%. They might as well have just gone and made it like an old angel with that's really tall and thick and all aluminum. And I'm going to talk about the composite parts here in a second. I mean, it's fat and it's ugly. Okay, they, they kept it very, very basic. And um, I'm going to talk about why I think they did that in the conclusion part of this video. So, with that being said, it is a thick, it's a, it's a big boy gun. Okay, and that had me thinking, honestly, a lot of people that's going to buy this gun in the $400 price range, they're going to be younger, okay? They're going to be 15, 16 year olds, um, 17, 18 maybe, they don't have really good jobs, they can't afford the $1,500 markers, okay? So with that being said, they might not, you know, they might not be older than someone like me who's 22 years old, even though I have baby hands. I know. 15 year olds that have bigger hands than I do so um, but with that being said if you're a younger kid and you are you do have baby hands like me it did take me a second to really adjust to this so it's really just adjust to the trigger and the whole grip frame and everything how it is all spaced out and how fat it is but honestly once I started using it it did and like I said it really did take me some time to get used to it like the Vanquish 1.5 and the Vanquish 2.0 it took me a second because that gun feels like it's like holding like out here okay but I, I did enjoy it and I grew to like it and this is something that's sort of grown on me where I started to get it in my hands and I was just like, like I, I hate it but it really has grown on me I I do like it I kinda don't like it because it is it's thick and it's heavy it really, I mean, there's not much else to say about it. It's it's thick and heavy. There's, there's, it's not really, it's not on the lighter side of guns. That's for damn sure. And it's not on the thin side. It's it's thick and it's heavy. That's that's all there really is to it. It's like a big black woman. Like that's it's a big black. That's what this that's what this bitch is. It's just a big black black woman. Um, hopefully, no black women watch this video. Um, not to discriminate, but that's just basically how I describe it to people. It's 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 thick. Puppy's got some meat on it. So if you don't like that, you might want to get one in your hands and test it out and try it before you actually buy one. Now the grip frame is is sort of or the the front grip portion is sort of designed to where it gets thinner up at the top where it's not like super thick like a thick block throughout so when you get up to the top it does get a little bit nicer when you hold on to the, the grip frame is not really that like that it's pretty much just one solid brick throughout um, let me talk about the composite parts now the composite parts I'm I'm just gonna tell you right now don't message us asking if the Planet Eclipse Etha is worth buying because it's plastic and you think it's gonna break because of the composite parts whoever says that um, I'm just just hear me out on this, okay, because I'm going to be honest, Plenty of Clips has tolerance issues in general, okay? Whoever says that they don't have tolerance issues, you're fucking retarded and you're drinking the Kool-Aid. Plenty of Clips CS1, when they were brand new, the front, the front grip was bending, okay? The front grip was pivoting, it was bending. The Plenty of Clips Geo 2.1, the Geo 3, the Eagle LV, or the Eagle 11s, pretty much everything until the Ego or the LV one, yeah. Uh, grip frames were bending pretty much a lot of bad you know they had tolerance issues if you took a if you took a bad dive every if you core sampled really not too hard if you sort of core sampled and just took like a little bit of a rougher dive something that normally wouldn't have bent a normal grip frame bent a normally planet eclipse grip frame this I'm gonna be honest I have more faith in I'm not going to bend this to what my uh, to I'll bend I'll bend my Geo 2. I'll yeah. I'll bend my Geo 3.1 before I bend this. I'll bend a Geo 3.5 before I bend this, and I'll bend a CS1 before I bend this. Okay. The aluminum has tolerance. Okay. It bends. It flexes. This is plastic. It doesn't bend. It doesn't flex. It's not going anywhere. Okay. This is made out of material that a Glock is made out of. So don't sit there and let the plastic hold you back from not buying it. Okay. Anyone who says don't buy. Um, even, even I'm not even talking about playing clips. Just in general, whoever says that you shouldn't buy a paintball gun that has um, composite parts because it's going to break easier is very uneducated. Okay, that's not. It's 100% a myth. That is not true. This is going to be stronger than what your normal aluminum guns is. I can almost put money on it. Okay, 
Now, if I had an extra spare ether to prove it, I really wanted to do a torture test on this gun, and I wanted to do some core samples and try to pull it apart with a car and that kind of stuff. Um, but I just don't have the money right now. I've been thinking about it. Um, I really do want to try to destroy this gun. I did make a torture test video. I'm going to talk about that later in the maintenance video. Um, but this gun is not going to break because of the plastic. So don't think about it that way. That's not going to happen. Plenty of clips also. One thing that I think is really cool that they're putting into this nice $400 gun is you pull out this little tab here at the bottom. And for me, because I have not cleaned this gun, like I said, I'm going to get into that here in a second. Um, it's all caped up full of dirt and everything. But this is how you change your battery right here. That's it. That's how you pull out your battery, which is really cool, really easily accessible. Not many gun companies, I don't think if any, are really putting that in their guns. Um, the trigger, I do want to say the trigger is, um, for me, out of the box, it was a little stiff. It still kind of is. I haven't really played around with it too much. You can adjust it. Um, same, basically, like the same trigger as like the G Tech and that kind of stuff. Um, the same concept. Um, basically, the, the cool thing is about it, you do have that range of, of really configuring how you want this trigger to be. Unlike some of the other guns in the price range, you can really actually dial this down a little bit better than what I've seen on some of the lower end guns, because I did play with it a little bit. Um, like I said, when I got out of the box, I found that when I was sitting there trying to ramp, it didn't want to hold because like my finger would get tired because the trigger was so stiff. Now, I don't have that issue because I lightened it up a little bit, I played around with it, and it does a lot better now, it's a lot nicer. So, that being said, um, it's, it's a pretty good trigger, especially for the price point. As you can see, the whole gun is macroless. Like I said, I'm not really going to get into the design features of it. So, But anyways, what I'm going to do now is, since I've sort of gone over and sort of told you what I, what I think generally about the gun, about the ergonomics and everything. Oh, one other thing is the, the board is, I don't like the plain Eclipse boards that they put in their low rent guns. They kind of are a pain in the ass to um, program. Actually, I should make sure that there is not a ball in the breech, and there was, so um, there's still one in my hopper. So basically, um, let me get that out of the way, and there was, and what you can see, what you can, man, that hopper holds like 50 balls. What you can, it might be able to see on the camera, I'll show you in the maintenance video. I have grown accustomed to really liking these lights right here because especially off the break, my retarded ass, oh wow, my hopper was still on. My retarded ass off the break, um, when I come up off of the box sometimes, I forget to turn off my hopper, okay? And if, if, I, if the eyes fault or if it's not reading a ball and I pull the trigger, that light comes on. I don't even have to like put my gun down and look at the board and be like, all right, what's going on here with my gun? Like, am I, oh, it's just my hopper. And now I just took my game, I just took my head out of the game for like 10 seconds to figure out that I was just retarded and didn't put my hopper on. I can come off the box and try to shoot and I can be like, oh, that light is on, I need it. And then hopper's on. I didn't even take my, my, uh, my eyes off the game, which is really cool. So I like how they position the lights right there. They're really, really bright. So you can see them right through. They're really actually bright and obnoxious, honestly. Uh, I didn't, you don't notice them when you're playing though. So a lot of people, I've been getting a lot of questions is, do you notice that when you're playing? I don't notice the lights when I'm playing unless if I'm actually really paying attention to it or I'm at a really dark indoor field. Like right now, I'm, down, I'm downstairs in a basement. It's dark except for right here, me looking forward. I notice it because I'm looking for it, but when you're shooting a lane, you don't notice it. All right, so here we're gonna go down into the maintenance video of this. Now, I just wanted to give one of my videos a quick shout out, the unboxing of this video. Okay, so if you guys have not gone and looked at the unboxing video of this, the link is gonna be down in the description below. Basically, long story short, go watch it. I took this gun, I froze it, I shot water through it, I beat this gun up straight up out of the box with the stickers on it, 100% brand new, took the lube off of it. I have not touched this bolt basically since then, okay? So this is, this gun has been running on practically no lube, okay? This gamma, this is the gamma core. Oh, wow, the die tool doesn't fit. That's a fail, I'm gonna have to edit this video. The reason why I'm not going to use die tools, I'm going to show you, um, use your plain eclipse tools because in this, um, you actually need like something to twist to get this off. 
So I kind of forgot about that because I haven't taken this gun apart. So, like I said, I have I froze this gun, okay? I've, I've used this in weather fluctuations. I've kept this in my car for the past two to three weeks, just literally in heat and cold because it's heating up, it's getting cold. It's heating up, it's getting cold. It's just that time of year. So I'm just letting this absolutely get shit on by the weather. And I have not lubed this at all. I've shot over 20, well, 20 cases through this, especially with the efficiency test. It shot pretty good. You'll see that after this. Um, and with that being said, here we're going to pull this bad boy out. So you can see there's absolutely no lube on this. By the way, here's the table. we got HHDJC, the PB Fit on here. Um, Jeff Churches, Anthony Perfetto. Anyways, if you see this table at events, come and sign it. So look at that bad boy. Let's let's get a zoom in on this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna like pull the bolt out a little bit. Let me see. Oh wow, it's like stuck. Okay, there's like shit coming off on my hands. Let me see if I can get it to focus on the bolt. This bolt has not been taken apart since I've owned it and since I froze it. So you can see, there is no lube, there is no nothing on this bolt, and wow, I don't even know what this is. Like, that is absolutely disgusting. Like, let me just get this out over here. Cool Team Insanity Microfiber. Um, shout out to Lone Wolf Paintball for making it. Well, technically it's Exalt, but. So, with that being said, this thing is, wow, what the kind of part? Uh, okay, so I got it apart. All right, so this is basically your gamma card core gamma core bleh. This thing is bulletproof this well, I should probably move this because it kind of blends in this thing is absolutely Bulletproof like I said, this is the same bolt. That's in the GTEC 160R mind you is was $800 now is like $700 to compete with the shocker. Okay, that's that's a high end that's like a mid high end gun it's sort of like that gray area where you don't have the money for a lamborghini so you buy like a used lamborghini that's like what the gtech 160r is it's like that certified pre-owned lamborghini it still gets ass and it still is very fast i don't even know where i'm going with this analogy at that point but this this is a solid proven bolt design right here and like i said this this baffles me that this has not been cleaned yet. This is the first time that I'm going to clean this. I have not changed a single O-ring on. I've literally done nothing to this. And you can see, wow, I don't even know what that is. It's like super, super like caked up in there. I don't even know if the camera can focus on this just because of it's trying. There it is. No, I don't know how well you can see it, but it's like all fuzzy and shit around the bolt. But yeah, it's like super bad. Um, yeah, that's nasty. So, this Gamma Core is simple to take apart, and this gun could honestly be a rental gun. That's sort of how I feel about this. Set this on 10.5 balls per second, and just, I mean, just let kids go have fun with this. Like, I'm probably just going to give this as a loaner gun. Probably just, you know, anytime someone wants to try it, play uh, to play paintball with me and bring people out. I have all my guns and I don't really have a beater gun. This has been turned into my beater gun. This was my Living Legends gun because I know Living Legends is nasty. Paint and mud and everything gets all over it. This is my scenario game gun um, when it's raining. This is like my rainy day gun. This is like my, wow, I really don't want to play paintball, but I kind of have to gun. Um, eh, come apart. And like I said, I haven't taken, wow, that was... Got it to break apart, and there we go. Let me get this part out, the spring. Wow, that spring is like, you can't really see it that well, but it's like black. It's truly black. Um, and let's just start wiping this all down. All the O-rings looking to be in perfect condition, other than then there's like a lot of weird fuzz and like dirt and stuff on there. There's like legitimate like dirt on this thing. Like it's... Like, it's got, like, a dirty hue to it, and, like, I'm taking dirt off of this this bolt, which is, just kind of baffles me, but you guys can see how simple this design is and how easy it works. There's not really, like, any parts to it, okay? So, it's, it's not like, you know, you have to unscrew two things. You just push the bolt right through, like I showed you. You literally just push it with your finger. There's an O-ring on the inside that kind of grabs onto this front O-ring that 
kind of gives it a little bit of an issue to push it through, but this is it. This is your gamma core. This is this is what is the soul and the heart of the Etha, the GTEC, and the GTEC 160R. This is what makes the gun shoot as well as it does. And to be honest, Plenty Clips has a really, really solid design right here. Like I said, I'm not going to go into the, all the features of it because you can pretty much look at it on Plenty Clips' website and you can be a boring person and read it. Actually, I like reading that kind of stuff and seeing how guns work, but um, no one cares about that. Let's get into how it shoots. And like I said, it shoots phenomenally smooth for the price point. For $400, there's no other gun maybe other than like uh, an axe until you get into the used prey. I would say this still shoots out shoots an axe in terms of smoothness and just overall performance. This 100% outshoots pretty much everything that I can think of as of right now for $400. It, it, it just really does. For what this bolt has been through, what I've put this through and not lubing it and just beating this thing up, there is nothing out there that shoots as smooth, shoots as consistent, and shoots as accurate. And consistency and accuracy sort of going hand in hand. If you're not shooting consistent, you're not going to be shooting accurate. If one ball comes out at 250 and the next ball comes out at 290, you're going to see some accuracy differences. You don't see this with the Plain Eclipse Etha. Like I said, this bolt design is used in an $800 gun essentially. So Plain Eclipse definitely backs this, which is really cool that they put this into their low end gun because that just, I mean, that baffles me that they actually did that because why would you buy the GTEC 160R when you can buy the Etha 2 and it's going to shoot pretty much identically the same. So that to me, I was like, all right, whatever. Um, as you guys know, I wasn't the biggest fan of the GTEC because of the fact of, you know, how it felt in the hands was kind of, eh, all right. I like the GTEC 160R a hell of a lot more, but how how it felt in the hands, I was like, oh, okay, yeah. Now, the composite parts, honestly, it's just all like the plasticky feel. And as you can see, I'm just lubing this up. I made a video of how to properly um, not over lube and also not under lube. If you guys have questions about lubing, um, like I said, I made a video. I lubed like 10 different guns and showed how you basically lube guns. Go and watch that if you have any questions on just how to do basic mark marker maintenance. But, you know, the GTEC, I was like, all right, it's kind of, it shoots good, but I just don't like how it feels in my hand. And for $500, when you go up an extra $100, there is some competition. You definitely have the axe that you're competing with. You have, you know, you just have some more. And then you just can, the used market at $500 and $550 is like endless. Like you, like the world is yours basically. So um, I was sort of half and half on the GTEC, but this price point right here, you can just see how easy this goes back together. It's, I mean, you have to be kind of dumb not to be able to put this back together. If you're watching this video because you don't know how to put it back together, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to insult you. Um, but yeah, I mean, for what it is, for what you pay, it does shoot super phenomenal. And... Honestly, would I buy this over the GTEC? I mean, if you're really strapped on cash, I get this question a lot, and I'm just going to answer it in the maintenance video because maintenance videos are boring if you have nothing to talk about. Um, if you're strapped on cash, honestly, I probably would. Um, I wouldn't spend the extra $100 just to get the GTEC. Okay, this is macroless. The composite parts, and honestly, like I was saying, the composite parts, the only thing aluminum really the aluminum just feels nice in the hands. It feels nicer. It's not holding plastic. So that's sort of, like I said, it has nothing to do with strength. This plastic plane eclipse, super fat, super extra thick black girl Etha is going to be stronger than, you know, your, your nice, thin, super ultra grip frame, whatever have you, HH Bob Long VCOM that you're shooting. I love my VCOM, but besides the point, it's don't don't like I said don't be like ah oh, it's composite parts it's gonna break and that's not true, so got this bad boy all finally nice and lubed up for the first time since it was brand new coming from the Plain Eclipse factory used for an entire season without any lube, and this boy what we're gonna do is just gonna put this back in. That just baffles me. This is just so weird. I would never. I honestly like. 
I don't think any other paintball gun other than a Titman could do this. This just this absolutely blows my mind. And like you guys can tell, I'm like super astonished, like just astonished by this. And let me just, I'm just gonna give it a little tighten up. You don't have to go too crazy with it. You can really hand tighten it. All right, just to show you that we are at 4,000. I zoomed in on the gauge. There's the 4,000 because my gauge is just a little off on my tank. So let's fill her up. It went right above four. So that's about 43. All right. All right, so I'm gonna load the first pot into it and then chrono it. I'm using the R2 with 260, so that way we can get a little bit more paint inside of there. All right, let me change the camera angle and get this bad boy chronoed. All right, gun on. Popper on, mask on, 278, 275, that is 282, Grab another pod. Okay, so you don't have to worry about it. We're still still doing all right on the air. Keep on going. Everybody let's get your air filled up chef. Right about one thousand. We're gonna put another pod into it. Let's rip on it some more. She's still shooting. Let's do it again. Another one down. Another one. 
She's starting to fall off, but we're not done yet. I'm gonna try to get one more out of it. Still chronoed at above 280 or 275. I'm going to see what we can do with one more pod. Nah, that's it. Alright, that's all she wrote, so I only got a couple shots out of this. I would say about five. I wouldn't even really count this pod. But so overall, we got one pod. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve pods on the Etha 2 on a full, on a full 4,000 PSI fill up. Alright guys, so, moment you've all been waiting for, um, what you guys want to hear, what if this review comes down to is, do you buy this gun or do you not buy this gun, okay? A lot of you guys know, not the biggest Plain Eclipse fan, like I said, I own Plain Eclipse stuff, not the biggest Plain Eclipse fan, especially the lower end markers. Um, personally, this is what I have to say about it. A lot of you guys saw the video of me when I got it out of the box. I froze this gun. I literally took it. I froze it. I kept it outside. I ran water through it. I froze it. It's still shot. Okay? That, to me, baffles me. I did that all outside in the middle of the winter time. It was like 10, 15 degrees outside. I don't know. It was super cold. And I did that without any lube on the bolt. Since then, I have not lubed this bolt okay until today until right here right now i have not lubed this bolt i have probably shot i would say at least over 20 cases easy easy 100 percent easy i've probably shot more than that just a safe roundabout number 20 cases let's just say and that is without any lube Okay, any lube. That is this gun being frozen. And the only time I really took the bolt out was after, let me think. I can't, I think I took it out after I froze it just to wipe the water down like a couple days later to make sure. I, I, don't, I think I might have, I don't remember. I think like I have like this little flashback that I actually took the bolt out just to wipe off whatever, whatever water was on it. But that's it. I have not lubed this gun at all. I haven't touched it. I have not taken out the bolt since. With that being said, just recently, and like I said, I haven't wanted to make this review because I'm just like, ah, do I, do I do I say this? Do I not say? And this, I'm going to tell you, I have picked this up, and and before I've picked up my Geo, just because my Geo had issues. Okay, Living Legends. My Geo, I forgot what happened. I, I 
it was a, it was a while ago. I, and I just decided to shoot this instead because I I think I was having like a like a board issue. I think I just needed to replace the battery. It wasn't that big of a deal, but I was like, fuck it, I'm just gonna shoot the Ether. Shot the Ether. It shot flawless. I literally came off the field at one point. I shot this on the final battle because I didn't care if this gun got dirty. I was like, you know what? I don't care. I want. I don't want to get my M2 nice and muddy and filled with paint because I know what the final battle is like. This was literally drenched in paint. Okay, come off the field at the end of Living Legends, at the end of the final battle, you just want to pack the car and fucking go home. So that's what we did. We just packed the bag. I literally just stuffed this in the case. I didn't even wipe any of the paint off of it. Stuffed it in the case, went home, and I kind of forgot about it because I really didn't want to clean it, and I knew I wasn't going to because I didn't care. I'm like, eh, it's a $400 ETH. I don't really care about that gun. But that being said, there's still paint all over it, honestly. It hasn't been the same since li Living Legends, honestly, because there's paint all, it was literally white. This black gun was white. And the next weekend, I, I had a practice, and I was just like, I opened up the case, and I was like, oh, fuck, I forgot to clean the ether. Like, it was actually like two weeks later, I was like, oh, shit, I forgot to clean the ether. Like, I was sitting there, I was like, oh, goddamn, like, well, only gun I brought, so I'm going to use it. I brought it just to get footage of it, and I was like, well, only gun I brought, so let's hope this bitch works pull it out of the box, and I was like, well, I still haven't lubed it since I froze it, so I, I hope this bad boy works. Threw my tank on it, worked flawless throughout the entire day. Fast forward, I kept on shooting, kept on shooting it, you know, shot my M2 and some other things in between, and then fast forward to Alien Invasion game. I was using my Geo 3.1 again, blew an O-ring in the middle of the game, and I was just like, fuck it, I can't do this. Grabbed the Etha, used it for like actually a couple of rounds and I just switched to the M2 and some other guns that I had. And I was like, screw it, I'm not going to shoot my Geo, I'm not going to worry about fixing it. Etha, that day, came in, out any lube on it, still being shot time and after time after time after time. Still went out there and worked. Shot better than the Geo. Again, practice that we just had just on Sunday, and today's, today's Tuesday, just literally last week. Started getting, I started having gun issues at the beginning of the day, thought I fixed it, thought it was the hopper, and then it was the Geo again, just something was, I think I, I broke, a, I chopped a ball, or I had a bad ball or something, and it just clogged the entire gun to where the eyes didn't want to read, and I, it was like shooting five balls a second, it was just pop, 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 I was like, you fucking kidding me? So I went in the back of the car again, grabbed the ether that was sitting in my car for like two weeks and just in the box just being knocked around in the back of my car granted it's fall time so this is the time of year when when you wake up in the morning you have to have your heat blasting on the car and you're shivering cold and you're you're like fuck i fucking hate michigan then at the end of the day you're like riding with your windows down in a short sleeve shirt because it's 80 degrees outside. That's what it was like. So it's going through all these weather fluctuations. It's super cold and it's super hot. It's super cold, it's super hot. Pull it out of the car, still no lube on it, still shot over 20 cases on it. Pull it out and I was like, well, I hope this gun works. It went out there and it shot flawless. Honestly, because of that, it's a no brainer why I would buy this gun. There's no reason why Anyone should look at this gun and be like, damn, that's a sexy looking gun. I'm going to buy this fucking Etha because this is, this is hot. This is the hottest gun on the market right now. No, because it's ugly as ass. This this is as ugly as an ass with cauliflower, like the cauliflower ass, you know, like the mountain shape, blah, 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 like the nasty ass. That is what this is. This is grandma ass. That's what this looks like 100%. You don't buy this gun for anything. You don't buy this gun because it has an on-off ASA. You don't buy this gun because it has cool light-up LEDs. You don't, you don't buy this gun because it literally any reason other than because it, it works. Okay, that's the only reason why I would say that you buy the Plain Eclipse Etha is that it fucking shoots phenomenal every single time you pull it out of the box. I have yet to have an issue, and I have not lubed it. And for some reason, it still works flawlessly, and that just absolutely blows my mind. Okay, so with that being said, yes, I recommend the Etha 2. It is ugly, it is fat, it is heavy, and I was just sort of sitting around thinking, I'm like, honestly, if they would have made the Etha a little bit more like what the paintball community would like to see, a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, not as heavy, a little bit slimmer, there would honestly be no reason to buy the GTEC 160R for this price point. Okay, there, there would, hands down, night and day, there'd be no reason to buy it. This is completely macroless, right? There's no macro line, 
It shoots just as good as the GTEC 160R. It has the same bolt system. It has very similar features, just doesn't have the OLED board. There'd be absolutely no reason why you would buy this gun over the GTEC 160R or even honestly like a Geo 3.5. I personally would still buy the 3.5 over it. That's a stretch. But like I said, there'd be no reason why you would why you wouldn't buy this gun over the 160R if they didn't make it as fat and as ugly and as as just heavy and hideous and shitty as this gun is. I hate it, but I love it. That's literally how I'm going to end this video is I fucking hate this gun. I really do, and I hate it because I love it. And I hate it because I know I shouldn't like it because I'm used to shooting my nice high-end markers. I'm like, yeah, I like shooting my Geos. I like shooting my, my M2. I like shooting my Banquishes. And all. you know, I have 24 guns over there, and most of them are high-end guns. Name a high-end gun, I've owned it. Everything but a Lux Ice is still yet to own that. Um, pretty much owned all of it, okay? And this still to the, this this just blows my mind just because of how it shoots with it just works it just absolutely works so that's how I'm gonna sort of end this video um, honestly don't like I said don't buy this because of the features don't go on playing Eclipse's website and be like oh yeah it's got an on off ASA yeah this is a great fucking gun I'm gonna buy it you don't buy it for that buy it because you want to buy a gun that works okay that's I mean, that's, I never really would have thought I would have, you know, recommended the, the Plain Eclipse Etha ever, and Plain Eclipse, you really did do a really sort of shitty but nice job on it. Shitty because it looks like ass, and it, but it just shoots phenomenal. So, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you guys understand for the reason why I didn't put out this review for a long time, just because I didn't want to make it, because of this very reason I just don't know I didn't know what to say I didn't, I didn't I was just like yeah I hate this gun but I gotta give it a good review because it actually shoots decent so um, that's how I'm gonna end this so thanks for watching guys hopefully I'm gonna get some more gameplay up of it soon gonna see you guys at World Cup and that is it deuces